Help support the companies that support our community. I'm starting out with a piece of maple. It's five and a half by five and a half and 12 inches long. So I'm using a bowl gouge to get it trued up and then we will get a tenon put down on one end of it. So I'm just making the tenon here with the square rougher and we'll get that all sized and then we'll grab it in the chuck. So I did upgrade my tool rack recently. Uh, I will put a link down below in the description. So a buddy of mine in Arizona is making these. His website is ZK Creations. And so he's 3D printing those. And they come in sets of four. So it's pretty cool. And they just screw right to the wall and hold on to your tools. It's a nice job. Go check out his website. He does awesome, awesome stuff. And he has some other accessories too for turning. I'm just getting the tenon sized here and once we get that put back on the lathe we'll switch jaws here real quick and then grab a hold of it and then we'll start shaping it Now that we have it secured in that chuck, we can start shaping it and I'm going to use a spindle gouge for that. So I'm making a vase, so I'll just bring that down and just get it shaped before we'll pull the tailstock away and, and start hollowing it out. The tool was getting a little bit dull, so I ran over and touched it up on the grinder and then went back to shaping it up. So it's nice with the uh, grinding jig, just one pass and it cleans it right back up. Now that we have it shaped, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the very top of it. So I have the rim I want. I'm just bringing this material down here and then we'll come in with the uh, number one hollower and clean this up a little bit. And then we're going to use a Forstner bed to, to hollow out the majority of it. Just get it cleaned out and set the depth. So I need a nice flat surface for the Forstner bit to go into. So I'm just taking this, this part right here off and making a flat surface for that Forstner bit. So when you're using a Forstner bed, especially for something like this that is deep, um, you can use an extension bar. Uh, they tend to flex a little bit depending on how, how deep you're going on it. But with something like this where the mouth on it is pretty good size, grab a Forstner bit that's bigger than your Jacobs chuck and that way you can just keep drilling right down into it. So I just ran this thing all the way to the bottom. It's just a little bit bigger than Jacob's chuck, so it slid right inside. And it is kind of a slow process. It 
it takes a little while to get all the way down to the bottom, but it really, as far as hollowing it out, speeds the whole process up. It sets the bottom, the depth of the bottom for you, and then cleans out a ton of material in the center. So whenever I'm doing something big like that, I like to use a Forstner bed. Then I switch back over to the number one hollower to start cleaning it out. And then to get around that little lip there, I used the, I believe it's the number two hollower, two or three, to get around that corner. After I got the shoulder all cleaned up with the number three hollower, I switched back to the number one and cleaned out the majority of the vase with that. So it is pretty, pretty long vase. So to get the very bottom of it, I grabbed the elbow tool and this is Tim Yoder's elbow tool and it works really nice. I got all the way down to the bottom with it and cleaned up that little bit I couldn't reach with the number one hauler. After I had it all cleaned out, I went ahead and ran through all the grits and sanded it up to 320. Just I went ahead and sanded it dry because we're going to do some burning on it. I'm going to trace some lines here. Just These are just reference lines and then we're going to use the wood burner to burn a little pattern on it. So after I got the lines all, all marked out, I went ahead and took it in the house and Robin drew a mountain range on the side of it. And then we'll bring it right back out here and put it on the carving stand and get it all burnt. So Robin drew the pattern around this, but it's you can really take just about any picture and trace it onto whatever piece it is and do exactly the same thing I did. And this is pretty simple. I just used it's like a little, the burning tip on it is just kind of a little, little curve. So it's just, I'm just burning little dots is basically what it is. They're maybe little rectangles, not quite round, but um, you can do this with any picture. Just transpose it onto the, on whatever piece it is you're doing and then start burning it. It's pretty easy process even going around and burning this whole little mountain range scene it was probably less than half an hour so it's really cool and it just adds a nice little touch to it and if you really get into doing some biography stuff um, you know you can do shadowing and, and different things that really will set a piece apart After we got it, got that done, we then took it out of the chuck. So this carving stand is really nice. You can move it into any position and it's nice for carving or burning or anything like that. So I went ahead and put it back on the lathe and we're gonna take the foot off now. So I used the cone center here and just put a piece of that non-skid uh, pad on it and put it right back in between centers. And then we'll get that foot taken off and get it all cleaned up.
Once I got the foot all brought down, I went ahead and started sanding it. So I ran through all the grits up to 320 with this, and then we'll sand off those pencil lines and start working on that. So the top half of it up here was already sanded up to 320. So I'm just, just getting rid of those pencil lines, and then we'll get some oil on this. And I'm using the doctor's walnut oil. I ran through the last couple of grits with the walnut oil up to 600 and then we'll get that foot taken off of there. So I just brought it down a little bit more and then cut it off by hand and then I just used this sanding pad on the, on the lathe and sanded the bottom of it. There we go, I got it all done. So I really like the way it came out. The whole mountain range, it really adds a nice touch to it. And it's kind of a plain piece of maple, so that really adds a, a nice little bit of detail to it. And I just took the sanding pad and my Jacob's chuck on the headstock and, and cleaned up the bottom of it there. But yeah, it's uh, and it really is, it's it's pretty quick little process. Um, as far as just burning dots like this, you can get really detailed into some other stuff, but it is super cool. Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, if you get into pyography, there's a ton of videos out there, you know, on, on how to do it, shading and all of that. But you can put pretty much any picture you want on here, trace it onto it, and then go ahead and, and burn it. So, but it was a fun project, and it adds a nice little touch to it. That My uh, tool rack. Those are super slick. Go, I put a link down below in the description. You just there's four screws on the bottom ones, two on the top ones, and just mounts it right up there. And they're in like sets of four, so you just kind of group them together on uh, depending on the height of them. But it was really nice. It really, I took my old one down and I had like dowels stuck into it, holding them up. And when I got done, it was like it looks sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Looks nice. Yeah, go check that out. I'll put a link down below in the description. But it was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, take care, and we will see you next time.